Hi, and welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lise Martin, coming to you from our Palo Alto studio. Very excited to be joined by a CUBE alumni, the CEO and president of Anita Borg, Brenda Darden Wilkerson. Welcome back to theCUBE, Brenda. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to have you here. You have been at Anita Borg for about six months. That's You've right. got a great background in the tech industry and in education. Mm -hmm. Give us a perspective of what's happening, what's new with Anita Borg. Well, we are very excited to be in this space at this point in history. It's very exciting. Women are alive to the possibilities of what they can contribute in tech. We can thank so many um, uh, important women who are contributing to the conversation and it is our job to make sure that they have a voice. And so we're working really hard to make sure that the perceptions that would uh, create barriers for women, uh, contributing to tech, having a career path, taking those really important positions of power in tech, that we obliterate them and that the floodgates are open for all who want to participate. I love that on the website, uh, I saw the we what we do, one of the things that shattering perceptions Right. And I thought that word shattering, that That's description, right. was really, really yeah. important. It is very important because you know you would think in 2018 that these these issues um, that our founder Anita Borg talked about years and years ago. I mean, she was a visionary uh, when she said 50-50 by 2020. And, and actually we're coming back from the cliff that we fell off of in terms of being um, our percentages in tech. Uh, we're at about 22% now. And a lot of that has to do with those perceptions. What are the images that young women see or people in power in tech? What are those images that uh, continue to contribute to uh, those barriers and that's first and foremost the thing that we're working to, uh, to change. When you were on theCUBE uh, at Grace Hopper 2017, yes. just six months or so ago, one of the things that you said that I really love was people can be yes. what they can see. Yes. So having awareness and showing females in technology yes. and leadership positions, yes. showing people this power of rep representation yes. is critical. Very much, very much so. And really all we're talking about is telling the truth. You know, it's not as though the women haven't always been there. It's not as though they aren't making huge contributions. It's just making sure that when they do the work, they get the credit for it and that people get to see it. I've seen it be uh, very important in my previous work in driving computer science. All of the stakeholders needed to understand that underrepresented people of all kinds could do tech um, and they were very much impacted by the images that they saw. And so it's our job to make sure that all of those stories get told. So you spent 15 years in education and you had many years before that in tech. You made a massive impact with the Computer Science for All initiative that you founded back in 2013 in yeah. Chicago. Tell us a little bit about that because it's really exploded yeah. and I'm sure really kind of exceeded your <laughs> expectations. Yeah. Tell us about that initiative and, and where it is currently today. I'm very excited about the initiative. I mean, really it was born out of some of my own experiences. I was a, a person who, uh, in my background, I wasn't exposed to computer science until I found it accidentally in college. I mean, obviously that accident changed my whole trajectory, right? So when I found out that that was still happening to women and underrepresented students, when I got into education, that was sort of the genesis of wanting to do something about it. It. That was when we launched Computer Science for All. And yes, now it is a national initiative. In uh, Chicago, we have a graduation requirement. Students all have to graduate with at least one year of computer science. And we're seeing that transformation. I've got students who we started with in the beginning who are graduating this year from universities with computer science, data science, information science degrees, and they are doing amazing things. They're starting companies, they're developing products, all because they had that exposure. And so it's exciting now to be on the other side, really kind of coming home full circle, back to advocate for women in tech as I started out, to make sure that those hundreds of thousands, millions of students have access to the opportunities that, that we need them to have access to. Right, that access is such a critical yes. thing and you kind of think in some respects, as we were talking about earlier, you've made a massive impact in Chicago, New York City. The Obama administration got behind this. So while you started out with a goal of reaching 400,000 yes. kids in Chicago, there's now over 1.5 million, but it starts with that awareness that mm -hmm. this shouldn't mm -hmm. be an elective. Right. We right. but kids need access to understand 
I can be what I can see. If I can't see it, that's right. I don't know that it's an opportunity. And if I don't know, if I can't touch it and know that I have access to being the creator of technology, changing the world as we know technology uh, alone can do, then we're going to miss out on the contributions that only they can make. And so that is what makes this so exciting. You know, when we started out, I'm thinking of the kindergartners that started that first year. They're in fourth grade now, right? Wow. What is the world going to look like when they graduate from high school? It's, it's just going to be amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> we were just covering Women in Data Science a couple of weeks ago. I was mentioning to you before. And I love that event because you walk into where the main event at Stanford is held and you just instantly feel positivity, yeah. excitement of yeah. this, this movement. And there's so much opportunity mm -hmm. within data science alone. And one of the things I wanted to talk with you about is, is we heard a lot of people on the, that were guests that day talk about the creative element. And we often think of the hard skills mm -hmm. that computer scientists mm -hmm. and data science need to have. But you found CS accidentally, as you said. And one of the things that I've heard you say is, is the opportunity to be creative. Yes. Tell us a little bit yes. more about yeah. what, how people, young girls, can get creative and express creativity through computer science. Well, it, that's very important. We found that we could attract more girls into computer science when we told them that they could use these skills and this knowledge to solve problems that they cared about. You know, initially, because it was such a, it thought to be such a male-oriented subject, it was all about computer games and, you know, the kill games and the girls were like, I'm not interested in that, that I want to do things that are impactful to the world, to change my society, to change my community. And, and you can do that with technology and you can create something out of your own ideas uh, from scratch, from concept. And I can see the lights go on for them. They wait, I can, I can create an app that helps my friends through a particularly difficult time uh, with bullies. Yes, you can do that. And so that is the exciting explosion that's about to happen. People who are really using these skills to solve uh, problems for the human good um, that's what we're going to see an increase of because that's what bring, many times the women bring. So Grace Hopper 2018 yes. is coming <clears throat> up, what, in September? It's September 26th through 28th this year, and it's in Houston. We're returning to Houston. We're uh, actually even going to use the Toyota Center for our keynotes. And you're expecting 20,000 right. people this That's year? That's right, we had 18,000 last wow. year, we're inviting 20,000 this year. We're gonna have um, over 17 tracks. Last year we had 405 concurrent sessions. The whole point is to give women an idea of how they can transform their lives coming into technology at whatever stage they found themselves in, whether they are just seekers and are interested in learning about technology or if they're middle career and going to that next stage or the executive level. We have something for all of them. So, and and you give out awards, the Abbey Awards yes, yes. at Grace Hopper. Give us a little yes. bit of an idea of, of the types of categories yeah. that in which women are awarded. So we award the top innovator, we award top um, uh, educator. So wherever women find themselves, uh, we want to bring attention to the fact that we need participation not in just what we think of as the high tech sector, but all along the pathway. Uh, people who are bringing attention to issues using technology in their community. We award all of those um, people who participate in creating more of a, a well-rounded experience for all of us to understand what technology can do for our lives. And it's really everywhere, yes. right? And that's one of the, the things I think is personally really intriguing about technology is every company now yeah. has to be a tech company. That's right, every company is a tech company, right? And so that's another thing that we want to make sure that people are not just thinking that, oh, if I'm going to get in tech, I just can work for these five or 10 high tech companies. Tech is everywhere, it's across the country, it's around the world, it's right where women are living um, and having their existence and we need their contribution in those places. Yeah, another thing about WIDS and when we were talking about data science that I found interesting was, was some of these female leaders talking about um, the hard skills, the data analysis, the interpretation, but also needing to have more diversity in the analysis to yes. remove, we all kind of come with biases, <clears throat> yes. but to start having more female perspectives sure. to really kind of open up um, the analyses and remove sure. some of the biases, which was sure. kind of something, to be honest, I've been in tech for a long time, I hadn't really thought about before. Yeah, and it's really shocking just how impactful some of those biases are in that data on people's everyday lives. Uh, we've heard things everywhere from, as, as, 
as serious as different sentencing levels for people based upon the algorithms that are there uh, to how much things can cost more for uh, important things like insurance based upon the data that's there. Um, I think the New York Times did a piece a couple weeks ago about face recognition software and, and those images that are in those databases. And so it's so important that we have diverse faces at the table. Um, as as a, a black woman, my face is, is likely to be um, mis, misunderstood 37% of the time, right? So to be able to have um, the diverse background there that will check for those images to make sure that they're more representative of the whole population is just gonna make all of our lives better. So at Grace Hopper, <clears throat> your, um, your audience is made up of um, girls in, in maybe interested in STEM, women yes. that you said are in many stages of their yes. careers. On the corporate side, mm -hmm. one of the things I read recently is an article that you wrote um, in Mashable called Voices of Women in Tech, collaboration with uh, Anita Borg, where you talked about corporate activism. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's some pretty significant benefits that companies can achieve by yes. speaking out. Tell us a little yeah. bit more about that. Well, you know, we have a much more um, engaged and active population, especially the millennials. And they care what their companies care about and how they contribute or don't contribute to the causes that they care about. And so one of the, the most expensive things that a company will ever experience is their ability to retain uh, great talent. And what we've seen is that a millennial Millennials will uh, uh, decide to stay or leave based upon some of the things that companies contribute to or don't contribute to. So being able to pay attention and to get into the game of, of other things that are outside just the product that they produce uh, actually contributed to a uh, company's bottom line. That's pretty interesting. It's very interesting and very important. And knowing that is something that they can immediately put in place that impacts uh, the success of their company. Absolutely. And some of the things, too, that I've heard on various Cube shows that we've done is, is the millennials' perspective on the gender gap. Yes. And often mm -hmm. they'll go, I don't know why you guys are still talking about this. Right. And we think, we don't either, right. but we are. And it's, <laughs> it's refreshing yes, to hear that this next generation yes. is thinks that that is just something that's kind yes. of ridiculous that we're still talking about. And yes. also that how important seeing a leader, mm -hmm. a CEO being involved in something mm -hmm. important is mm -hmm. to retention. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great message that Anita Bohr can help get out there and show businesses this huge impact and benefit yes. to you in fostering your own talent. Yeah, you know, and it's encouraging, as you say, the, the millennials are, are jumping in and many more people are jumping in and, and giving this perspective to companies, which is actually assisting them, right? So now they don't have to feel like, okay, this is just my idea, I'm gonna take a risk and jump out. They've got people who are loyal to their organization saying, I believe in this and I believe in you, let's do this together. Yes. And so definitely our job is to make sure that companies have access to all the information they need to make these, what shouldn't be hard decisions, but we're there to help them. So the 50-50 idea, you have said yes. that, and you mentioned that earlier, that you want to see 50-50 representation yes. of, of mm -hmm. females in the next 10 years. Tell us a little bit more about kind of what's coming out the rest of 2018 from Anita Borg and how you guys are working to help make that, help get those numbers up from where they are yeah. currently. Yeah, so it's all about awareness and there's a lot of awareness out there, but what we wanna do is, is increase it. You mentioned the idea of people can't be what they can't see. Images are so powerful. And so we want to work with media outlets. We want to work with entertainment companies, with writers, with producers and say, help us create the images that can turn around and tell the truth, really. I mean, we're not creating a fiction. Let's just tell the truth yes. that allow people to understand that, yes, this is, this is how this works. And let's couple that with the data that shows that the bottom lines of companies that have more diverse workforces, that have more diverse boards, are muchly improved over those that are not diverse. And so so we're creating that awareness, we're helping our companies find out the, what we call not only best practices, but many times it's better practices. We're still working towards that best practice of here's how you can make incremental steps forward. <clears throat> Excuse me, you mentioned 10 years. Um, I'm a little more urgent than that. I feel like the things that we get done are the things that we're most urgent about. One of the issues about why we're still dealing with these things, it's just been sort of like, let's work on it in the sweet by and by. I want to say, let's work on it by uh, in the next two years, in the next three years. Let's make some, let's make some goals. Let's put some metrics behind them. And, and those are some of the things that we help companies do. I love that urgency. I yes. think it's it's essential. But the the awareness and kind of this 
this idea that you have of let's just tell the truth, yeah. there's really nothing more powerful yeah. than that. But also the imagery and the representation yes. is critical for that. Mm -hmm. If you look back at all of your success mm -hmm. and think back to younger Brenda, yes. what advice would you give somebody that looks at you and goes, wow, mm -hmm. where, where do I start? Mm -hmm. What's that mm -hmm. recommendation for mm -hmm. shattering someone's own maybe perception of themselves and getting right. into technology? Right. I mean, we have to start with the conversation that we have with ourselves. But, you know, we, we're in this world now where there's so many great images. Find those images. You know, you can find successful women. There are so many of them. Talk to them. Reach out to those of us because we want you to succeed. We want you to participate and come on board. And so, you know, we have a world with social media that allows people to have access to each other that, that we didn't have before. But the most important thing is don't take no for an answer. Answer. not only because it's just not true but because we need you and it is an amazing time right now where you have all these women who are standing up saying that they want change and we're here to, here to support them and we're here to support you speaking of you know this, this kind of movement going on globally yes. about we want change with the me too movement mm -hmm. bit of a different um, Genesis however yes the awareness is starting to be there you talked about needing the entertainment industry mm -hmm. to get on board and really yeah. start ensuring that we're sharing the truth here. Mm -hmm. What opportunities do you see to deliver through Anita Borg that that maybe you can leverage that's coming from the Me Too movement and, and all of Hollywood that's really starting to stand up and, mm -hmm. and be very vocal about mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because people ask me that question a lot. And from my own perspective, there's like this awakening because those same sorts of things were happening in tech as well. We know, we've seen the stories. It's not as though we're looking, you know, aghast at what's happening to women across, you know, across the way. So these things have been happening and what is, what, what is happening is people are starting to look internally to say, how can I strengthen myself and stand up like these women did? And so at AnitaB.org, we are creating those opportunities for women to network, for them to get mentored. We have um, communities around the world where women can get together and understand what the pathway was of other women. It would have been really helpful for me to have, you know, sort of some of those breadcrumbs out in front of me, some of those examples and other people to talk to, but we provide that as part of what we do in our organization. We provide um, training opportunities, other experiences where people can see all across the tech e ecosystem where they can and come in. It's not just one way in, it's just not one pathway. And so that's going to be a really important thing to make sure that women know they have choices. And I think that's even, it's so important in general, but you mentioned some of the attendees at Grace Hopper are maybe women who are in transition, who are maybe had a career in something yes. different for a while and are now getting yes. into tech. I'd love to maybe understand yeah. that a little bit more, mm -hmm. maybe some of the demographics there, but mm -hmm. how do you see, what are, what are some of the inspirational stories maybe that you can see that where a woman who maybe was mid-career or somewhere around there just went, you know what? I am interested in this. Maybe mm -hmm. didn't have the confidence when mm -hmm. she was younger. Mm -hmm. Any stories there mm -hmm. that kind of jump out at you mm -hmm. that are great examples of it's never too late? Absolutely. In fact, that was some of my first inspiration in getting involved with taking my background in tech and in sort of lighting the path for people to get in who had traditionally been shut out. My first educational experience was at a community college level. And many of those people were people who, like myself, had not been given that introductory experience of computer science in K-12 space. Maybe they went to work and did some other things. Maybe they got talked out of it. You know, it's not for you. And they came back later saying, you know, maybe I could learn, maybe I could try. And so really opening up that pathway to them. I've seen people who who have gone from either having no education or maybe having even a PhD in linguistics, figuring out once again that creativity, how can I take that and apply that technologically to creating solutions that only I would care about or know about. And so we've seen people come from all different walks of life, different career paths, and, and start small. Some of them are self-trained, some of them are boot camp trained, some of them go back and get an additional education. What we do at anita.b.org is not only help them understand those multiple pathways, but we work with partner companies to say, you know, there are other ways for people to come in. Uh, we've got these, what, um, 500, 600,000 empty positions. Why don't you take a look at some of the people who are in your industry are already? If you're a bank and you've got a woman who's been working for you for 20 years, she knows your business inside out. She is loyal. She can learn the tech. 
you know, so we're, we're seeing those types of transitions take place as well. Fantastic. Well, Grace Hopper in uh, Houston in September. Yes. Is there also Grace Hopper, are there forums in other countries? Yes. So we also have Grace Hopper India that takes place in November, um, right after the, the one we do here in the United States. We've also started to have one day Grace Hopper events. We call them Hopper by Once, and we are planning those out around the world. So we're increasing, we're trying to in increase people's opportunity to come and experience all, all of the wonderful things that are available at Grace Hopper. We hear so many wonderful things about how it's transformative in their lives to see that many women in one place to have access to training and mentoring and networking opportunities and we're just excited for what's to come. Well we're excited to see <laughs> what happens in the next few months and Brenda thanks so much for stopping by sharing My what's pleasure. what's new with anitab.org you. your vision for that and the transformation that you're thank already you. helping to facilitate. Thank you for having me. Absolutely okay. our pleasure. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin from our Palo Alto studios. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.